Hello and welcome to another episode of Andy's Shed Live. Um, this time it is Series 7, Episode 18 for Sunday the 31st of May 2020. Hello there and welcome to the show. Um, yeah, we, we, we've just reappeared. If you've been watching the little countdown thing for the last 40 minutes or so, wonder why the stream just dropped out and then comes back again. Um, the, the reason it drops and comes back is, um, is so we don't have all that countdown on the pre-recorded video. Um, you know, when people watch it back to later date on YouTube. Otherwise, I have to go through it all and edit the first 40 minutes or so off. That's just that countdown and things. And it's a bit of a pain. Um, it's a, a fairly short-ish show tonight. Um, big show next week, though. It's Andy Shed almost live next week. We've got we've pre-recorded part of next week's. But we're going to be doing it as live and I will hopefully still be here in the chat as well next week. Um, but it'll be what they call a YouTube premiere as opposed to a YouTube live. And it's all about putting together from scratch a telephone 232 next week. So if you've got an old telephone 232 that you uh, that you need to restore, if you've got a load of bits to make a telephone 232, then next week is the one to watch. Um because we will be doing one then. Um, I've got to say hello to a few people in the chat. I've got to say hello to Christopher2000 and also Arthur G, who are both there in the chat already this evening. I'm just finding somewhere new to put my phone because it's running down on battery. And I've, I've got to have it plugged in today and I can't put it where I normally put it if it's plugged in because it's, it's really stupid, this phone, because it's a U got a USB on it. And the USB plugs in the bottom, um, so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a pain in the uh, in the proverbial. Um, Arthur says it sounds good next week about the two three two. Yes, would you would you like a sneak preview, Arthur? Hang on. Yeah. There, you see, I have actually put it together, but it's only it's only sort of slightly together it's not it's not all wired up or anything inside yet next week will be the actual physically putting together of the bits and what order to do it in and what order not to do it in as i found out earlier and then the following week hopefully we'll be doing the actual wiring up of it all inside um and hopefully we'll end up with a working phone this is one of two that i got um last summer yeah summer last year fetched them from sunny hun stanton um, with a load of other bits right i'm just going to disappear down out the shot again while i put this back where it was so yeah so that, that is the uh, that is the two three two and i've got lots of bits of it now here's a tip for you I've said this before, but if, if any of you weren't, weren't watching this before, um, if you get verdigris on electrical connections and you take you take the uh, all the little uh, nuts and bolts apart, and and they've all got a verdigris or white powder and that on them, um, put them in a little plastic bag like this and get some contact cleaner, squirt it in the bag and stick the bag around, and. Because these were all furry and horrible. These are out that 232. These were all furry and horrible when they came out. And uh, and they're all beautifully clean now. So I'll be telling you more about that next week. Um, what year is the 232, Arthur asked. Quite fancy getting one of those. You know something? That's a good question. Somebody asked me what year the other phone was. Was it you that asked me what year the the 746 was behind me last week after because I've still not looked let's pick up this 232 right it should tell me underneath what year it is uh, right FWR looks like 59.2 under the bottom of there can you see that I don't know if you can see that or not um, FWR 592 but I think that's when it's been refurbished um, 
I believe, the FWR. Now, there's nothing else under there. There's a very faint mark under it that says GPO, then something I can't read at all. It's there where I'm pointing with me. I don't know if you can just see. It just says GPO. Can you see that? Um, but I can't read what it says underneath it. So that I believe the FWR is when they've been refurbished, isn't it? On a modern, on a more modern phone, that's normally a sticker. Um, but uh, it's printed on these. Right, let me put that out of the way again. like swap shop this can anybody remember swap shop when no element used to go diving under the desk for things on a Saturday morning um, yes uh, Arthur says yes FDUR is factory Wales refurbished um, this one somebody was asking me what date this one was right it's a 77 it's a 77 77 one on the bottom of this with a nice GEC mark as well. The 746. This is the one that we were messing with last week and rebuilding the corner. If you remember. Or was it last week or the week before. And I've still got to polish this yet. Up oh, yet. And finish the colour restoration on it. So that's a 77. And the other was a, was a 50 something. So yeah. We've been doing... All kinds of stuff with the telephones and that this week and things, um, and yeah, it's just been just been mad, absolutely mad this week it's been. So that's what that's what we've been up to there. I've also also been restoring this. <laughs> People. People look in horror when I bring one of these out. Oh no, not a stylophone. But this is a very old stylophone. This is one of the first stylophones made, this one. It's not a modern one, because they do make modern ones again now. And it's not even one from the 1970s. This is from the 60s. And how can we tell it's from the 60s? There's a really easy way of, uh, of being able to tell. I just need to twiddle about with some cameras and things um, right hang on right there we go yeah you see these blank these brown bits or they may even look black to you but basically the, bit, the bits of the circuit board um, these little dark bits between the keys if your stylophone has got those it's a very early one it's a very early model if you've got those um, on there but yeah the, the, these are just brilliant I absolutely love styrofoams I really do yeah um, but yeah I, I can play them allegedly I can I can play them. I can do do like the people beside the seaside on it. Now modern stylophones have a volume control. Old ones don't. So what you have to do with an old one if you want to limit the volume, put your hand across there like that. <laughs> do that, and and you will see the difference. Like that. So would you like? I do like the people beside the seaside on the stylophone if I can remember how to do it. Hang on, it needs a bit of a, it needs a bit of a rub. See, see what you're actually doing with a stylophone. The keys on a stylophone are actually the circuit board inside the device of the machine. And what you are doing when you touch your stylus to your keys, what you are doing is. What you're, what you're actually doing is you are um, basically putting 
uh, power through a different number of resistors or a different circuit. In the very early ones it was just loads of different resistors. Um, in later ones it's a bit more complex than that. Um, but basically all you're doing is making a circuit on, on your circuit board with this. So, so if this isn't perfectly clean and the end of your stands isn't perfectly clean and these little wires break as well um, then um, then uh, you're in trouble basically. Arthur says he had a white stylophone uh, and Chris says he ha he's got a PMG 232 phone that was made in 1930. Right, next week then Chris, next week's the one for you and uh, we'll see if I'm putting this one together right or wrong. Um, <laughs> I've been putting it back together at the moment because I took it apart months ago and can't quite remember how it goes back together. Um, so putting it back together was a bit of trial and error and I did do it wrong at one point but I've left it in because you know as you can see the mistakes and stuff. Um, so yeah, all right, I've polished my stylophone. I do, I, I, oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Let's see if we can get a YouTube copyright strike, shall we? Right, I'm rubbish at this. Yeah, I am officially rubbish at this. Okay, all right. Let me have another go at that, because I've just did, it, just did it all wrong. Yes, yes, I think I think I'll be safe enough with that copyright strike as, as well, Arthur. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think they'll be releasing that on a long playing record anytime soon, will they? But but uh, but yeah, you can get that's as much as music as a normal person can get out of one. To get anything any better out of one, you have to be really really talented, and there are some people um, who are. Um, look on YouTube or look on library and things like that and um, and you will find some people who are a bit more talented than me about it but uh, yeah that is an original stylophone and oh, I'm on the wrong camera again that's, that's an original one from the early 1960s and I know what people are saying take the back off I want to have a look now you said it's all resistors take the back off right. All you do in theory is push that little white tab down. In practice, it's sometimes not as easy as that. There we go. So that's what you have inside it. This is a, this is how you see a genuine one. A genuine one runs on a nine volt battery, and there's the big row of resistors that are not all individual resistors on a more modern one. Let me get it up close here and get it in focus a bit more. And that is basically it. And the circuit board, it, you can't see though because it's brown, it's in a black case. But that dark brown circuit board is actually what all those components are mounted to. The circuit is of course on the other side and the keys are part of the circuit. So it's as simple as that. A stylophone. Brilliant things. Hours of endless fun if you're the one playing them. Hours of endless torture if you're the one having to listen to them. But that's basically it. So you put the battery back in there like there. 
clip it all back together. Now, if you wanted to buy a vintage stylophone, it's a bit of a case of buyer beware because um, there are a lot of modern reproduction ones out there. They started making them again a few years ago, and there are differences to them. The modern ones have got a thing to plug an MP3 player into them, and they've got a, a slider on here to do three different voices. Um, now, Arthur said he had a white one, I believe. Um, um, no, I'm just going through. I'm just going back through the things here. Um, yeah, he says he had a white one. Now, a white stylophone didn't make the same noise as this. A white one is um, what they call a treble. There was originally three sorts. There was the treble, which was the white one. There was the standard one, which is this with the black and white case. And there was a bass one. Now, the bass stylophone is very, very rare. It was a kind of light brown colour, a bit a similar sort of colour to the desk here, but not wood effect. It was just uh, a light brown colour, and I think the grill on it was a sort of goldy effect grill. They are super rare, and the reason that they are rare is because the technology wasn't up to being able to do the low notes, so they didn't work very well. But that's a base stylophone, a sort of pale brown one, and they're really rare. Not a wood effect one. A wood effect one is what they call the new sound stylophone, which are things that came out later in the in the 70s as opposed to the 60s. And they're actually really good. They've got a little round volume control on there, so you can turn those ones down. They're nice, those wood effect ones. They do actually sound a bit more musical shall we say but as a piece of 60s and 70s kitsch and i love 60s and 70s devices and things got to have a stylophone on you? you've got 1970s telephones and that you've got to have a stylophone on you to go with them so. so there you go there is the stylophone it's uh, just one of those things um michael t says flight of the bumblebee that'd be good on the stylophone wouldn't it I don't know if you can do it. I don't know if there's enough keys along uh, on on because what happens is you run out of keys because it's not a very big keyboard. So it's going -la 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 -la, up and up and down. You you run out of keys if you're not careful. I tried to I tried to do an Ava Max song on a stylophone um, a couple of months back. I just ran out of keys because she's so up and down the scale. Um, I just ran off the end of the keyboard on the stylophone, so I couldn't do it. Um, so yeah, yeah, might have to try fly the bumblebee when I've got we need another lockdown, so I have basically another six weeks to kill, and then uh, then I might get round to it, possibly <laughs> at some point. Um, right, um, I reckon that probably almost wraps it up for this week. Um, not a massive amount on to tell you this week, because to be honest, there's not been a great deal happening. But I've been out in the garden most of this week. The, the, the beautiful weather. I've got properly sunburned this week. I'm not. I am this colour. It's not a trick of the camera. I am. I am this colour at the minute. Um, because uh, yeah, it's been so hot this week, and I, I spent quite a bit of time out in the. Out in the garden. Uh, Arthur says, so would the white one be 1960s? Um, it would be 60s or 70s probably, Arthur. Um, I'd need to see it um, to be able to tell you more. If, it, if it's got those bits between the keys, if it's got those dark bits between the keys, at the top of the keyboard there, the, these, these dark bits, then it is definitely 60s. If it's not got those, if the keys sort of just continue and the dark bits are omitted, then it's either late 60s or into the 70s. Um, but um, they started out with those dark bits. It's definitely 60s if it's got those dark bits. Um, if it's not, it's a bit later on, sort of maybe early 1970s, something like that. Has it got Rolf Harris on the box? Have you still got the box? 
if it's got Rolf Harris on the box, then uh, then uh, it's late 60s, early 70s-ish. I believe, because he was kind of an ambassador for the Stylophone. The Stylophone story is actually very, a really, really interesting story, how Stylophones came to be. It was a recording company in Cricklewood, um, you know, a music recording company. <laughs> Um, in Cricklewood in North London and um, basically what happened one of the guys that worked there is uh, one of his kids had got a toy piano that was had batteries in and worked electrically and the keys broke on the toy piano and he took it into work to use their soldering iron and whatnot to try and mend it in the in the recording studio and he realized that he could put a piece of wire uh, off the circuit board in it somewhere and just touch it on the contacts that were underneath the original keys that had broken and he didn't need didn't need the press keys he could just touch the wire onto the circuit board and then and then he, he did this and somebody else in the recording uh, in the recording studio said here we could make those we'd make a fortune if we made those and sold them so they did and that's how stylophones came about it was a kind of happy accident while trying to mend a child's toy and the name of the company that makes them a company called Dubrec is actually Dub Rec a lot of people think it's a foreign company Dubrec they think it's French or something it's not it's because in a recording studio on old real to real tape decks and things they're often marked Dub and rec, dub and record, dub rec, and they just saw that in the studio and thought that to make a good name, and so they called it dub rec. And that's how that's how it came about. There are websites and that where you can get the whole stylophone story. It's really really interesting story about about great British boffin in your shed type inventors and that a um, bit like what we do here really. And um, and then yeah, and then the Stylophone went out of favour. The company went bust, and then I think it's the original inventor's son who brought it back, and has now made Stylophones. Uh, when Tandy had shops before the no, not Tandy. When uh, when Maplin had shops in the UK before the Maplin shops all closed um, a couple of years ago, they uh, one of the things that they sold a lot of were the modern Stylophones, and. Um, and uh, I think it's the son of the original inventor. I think it's his son. Might, might even be his grandson. I'm not sure about that. But it's some relation who's kind of brought them back anyway. So uh, it's great to have them back. Um, uh, Arthur says he thinks it had Rolf Harris on the box. Uh, it'll look next time he's up in, in his mother's house. Is it in the attic? Because most telephones end up lost in the attic. Um, Michael T. Was Rolf Harris promoting stylophones from day one? Or was he just part of the story? He was, yes, he was promoting them from day one. Um, he used to have a television show in the 60s. Um, I think it was called something like Rolf and the Young Generation. And the Young Generation were all singing, all dancing, teenage group that were kind of like with him. And somehow the inventors of the stylophone, the people from Debrecht, managed to get the prototype into Rolf Harris's hands. Now, of course, he's fallen from favour since then and that for reasons that we'll not go into here. Um, but in the 60s and 70s, Rolf Harris was a major, major TV and also music star. He had quite a few hit hit novelty records, you know, Tiny tiny Kangaroo Dance Sport and things like that. And he had this TV show in the 60s. Um, and they managed to get this style, the prototype stylophone into his hands and he liked it. Um, I think they basically met him outside of a... TV studio somewhere as he was coming out getting into his car and here Rolf what do you think of this and shoved it in shoved it uh, under his nose and he started playing I mean, yeah, this, is, this is great um, can we have this on the show next week uh, and so he wanted to play but he wanted to play it with the young generation and do like a stylophone group and there was only one stylophone 
So over the space of about a week or a fortnight, they frantically hand-built about four, five, maybe six more <laughs> so the young generation could all play them. And there is a clip um, somewhere of the young generation playing all the all these stylophones and stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it was involved on, the, on that television show from day one. And I had one. I, I was bought a stylophone when I was a kid in the 70s. Uh, which I've still got, and then a, a few years ago I thought, well, it would be interesting to collect all the different variations of them. So I've got maybe seven or eight now that are different variations of a theme, and there's still a lot that I've not got as well. Um, and they are back now. You can There are modern stylophones now that are really, really musical, that don't just do square waves like the old ones do, that do all kinds of other things as well. Um, so there's things like... Um, these fantastic, is it Stylophone um, S2 or something like that? And you know, they're like big keyboards, you know, they're like full size proper musical instruments and cost a lot of money. Um, and uh, there are musicians now who use them, Pixie Lot uses them, um, various people have used them over time. I think David Bowie was a famous one who used one, but it, in, in recent times, Pixie a Lot, I know, has certainly used stylophones. So, how the heck did we get onto stylophones today? I, that wasn't intentional. We've just sort of gone off at a tangent on uh, on stylophones. Um, right, what we what we got in the chat? I'm just looking as I, as I sit here. Uh, Chris says he took his 232 apart and rebuilt it so it... Hang on. I'm getting old. I can't read it anymore the way I used to. Um, Chris says he took his PMG 232 apart and rebuilt it um, to work phone and I used the phone in my bedroom. So you got the 232 working in your bedroom. Excellent. Um... Uh, did Chicory Tip use a stylophone? Son of my father. Um, I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. I don't think they had a stylophone. They probably had, had a very early um, electronic keyboard or something. Though, again, there was a brilliant documentary about about Marshall amplifiers and another one about really early keyboards. I, I think I've been on BBC Four here in the UK at some point, and I found them on YouTube, but I can't find them now. <laughs> Maybe they took them down or something. Brilliant documentaries, really, really good if you if you bored in a lockdown or something like that. Um, but yeah, look for the documentary about about early keyboards and the one about the Marshall amplifier as well, because the Marshall amp is a similar story to the stylophone about how they built an amplifier to do all the things that other amplifiers did but badly because they wanted an amplifier that worked badly because they wanted the distortion uh, and everybody else tried to take all the distortion out and Marshall did this thing to put all the distortion in and that's what basically the kids wanted but yeah the story of the Marshall amp is fascinating really really good um, not that I'm musical at all, as you could tell by the stylophone earlier. Um, so yeah, I don't know if ch if chicory trip chicory blur. Should I start a bit again? I'm not doing very well today. I don't know if chicory um, tip used a stylophone, um, but I don't think they did. I don't think they did. Right, that I'm afraid is about a wrap. I think. Uh, Arthur says he used to use Vox and Marshall amps. Terrific, but expensive. Yeah. Did yours go up to 11, Arthur? Some people will not get that. Yeah, did, did yours go all the way up to 11? <laughs> um, especially the hand-wired ones opposed to PCBs. Yeah. Well, all, all, I think all Marshall amps were originally hand-wired. I'm not an expert on amplifiers. 
Um, I only basically know what I learned from this documentary, but I think they were all handmade originally, the Marshall ones. In the back of a little shop, again, in, again, in the back of a little shop in London. Um, and I'm not sure which bit of London. Wouldn't it be good if that was also in in um, in Cricklewood? I don't know. I don't know where the shop was, where they used to make Marshall amps. Um, I can't. I can't remember. Shall I Google it? Shall we have a look and Google it? Just what's that? Oh, hang on. I just said, shall I have a look and Google it? And something strange has opened on on my phone on Google. And Google has sort of come alive. I'm not sure if we're still on air now because I've got a black screen in front of me. What's happened? Let's have a look. Are we still on? Yes, we're still on. We're okay. We're, we're still here. We're still alive. Um, yeah, Marshall amplifiers. That's a very good question now. Where were Marshall amplifiers made? I'm going to Google it while we're on now because it'll, it'll bug me. Uh, well, if I don't have a look. Um, so let's see. Marshall amps were made. Right, we're, ha we're having a look. Um, yeah, it was a fella called Jib. Um, Marshall history. Right, this is what you want. Marshall history. Marshall.com. Um, when it comes up, because my computer is doing a lot at the minute. Um, but, right, the, the history of uh, Marshall. Marshall has been celebrated by some of the world's greatest bands and musicians. Um, None of it would be possible without founder and revolutionary Jim Marshall OBE and his son Terry. Jim was born in London on the 29th of July 1923. Uh, um, Jim took up the drums and by the 1930s was playing semi-professionally. Um, after over 20 years gigging on the road, in 1960 Jim opened a family-run music store with his wife Violet and son Terry called Jim Marshall Music and Son at 76 Uxbridge Road at Hanwell in London. And uh, and that is where they made and uh, then um, sold the first Marshall amp. And the first Marshall amp does, does still exist. So go to that website, marshall.com, and um, you can get all the, all the history of the... Uh, of the Marshall amp there. Sorry if it went a bit freezy there as I, as I was looking on my computer. This computer's doing an awful lot on an old computer when it's trying to do these live streams as well. So yeah, that's basically the story of the Marshall amp. Um, right, live chat, where is it? Um, yeah, Jim Marshall's a drummer. Oh, Arthur says he met him in the 1980s. So I read all that out and you already knew the answer to that then. <laughs> there, Arthur. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, the, the moment, yeah, well, if you met him, if you've not seen it, look for that, the story of the Marshall Amp, that documentary, because it's an hour of great telly, that is. You'll love it. If you know a bit about amplifying, if you met Jim Marshall, You'll, you'll love that show. It's, it's really, really good. Um, right. Uh, Chris says he was rebuilding his railway signal telephone today. And he's got it working. That the one in the box, Chris. The one in the little tin box. It's got a, a 746 and 706 type 
handset on it. Basically, a handset in a box with a dial. It, uh, maybe it doesn't have a dial. They, did, they didn't all have dials. Um, but yeah, excellent. I'm glad you got it working. Have you have you put it up outside somewhere or something, like the bottom of the garden or something? Because they are waterproof, those in theory. Um, but yeah, ve very very good. You're getting more phones working than me. You'll have to take over doing this, and I'll, I'll, I'll watch. Yeah, you will, you'll have to do a live stream of mending your phones, and I'll watch yours. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do a swap one day or we'll try and get you on somehow via Skype or something I don't know quite how that would work I don't know if this, this old computer this steam powered computer that I'm using here is is up to that really but, um, um, yeah right uh, the early 70s ones were mega loud um, I assume that's uh, that's Marshall Amps. Um, Arthur says, did they go to Milton Keynes? I believe they did go to Milton Keynes, Arthur. I think they opened a factory in Milton Keynes later. Because obviously they couldn't make them all in the back of a shop. Um, so I think when they opened a factory, I think the factory was at Milton Keynes. Um, right, Chris says that his railway telephone has a Western Electric handset in it that's interesting because they don't here the ones we get here if it's what I'm thinking it is have a GPO handset like on that 746 behind me there so that's an interesting difference that I didn't know about um, I'll have to look into that does it have a model number or anything on it is it is it got a designated model number? Oh, it's got it in a, in, a, in a model railway room. So yeah, I guess that's fitting when it came off a signal post, isn't it? So you know, right. It's time for me to go because it's almost eight o'clock. If you're in the UK and if you're watching this live, put Channel 4 on, 8 o'clock. Um, if, if you want to see something something fun and silly and also a bit creative. It's Keith Lemon's Fantastical Factory of Curious Crafts. Don't ask me to say it again because I probably can't. Um, but yeah, it's on Channel 4, I believe, 8 o'clock and it's quite good. Um, like I say, it's not too technical, but it's people making stuff and that. And it turns out Keith Lemon is actually an artist. Lee Francis, because of course Keith Lemon is a character that Lee Francis plays. Um, turns out he's actually a really good artist. Who knew? Um, so yeah, so I am off now to watch that. I will see you guys all hopefully same time, same place next week, uh, including the pre-recorded bit about putting the phone back together. But, but, even though we may be pre-recorded, I'm hopefully still going to be around in the chat because it will be what they call a YouTube premiere. So don't look for a live next week, look for a YouTube premiere, which will premiere um, at, uh, probably back at our original 6.30 time, I would think. And then in a fortnight's time, we'll be back again at 7 o'clock, okay? So... All right, no, let's not do that. Let's do it all at seven o'clock. So seven o'clock next week, it gives Chris an extra half hour to go train spotting as well in the middle of the night like he does. Um, so seven o'clock next week for the YouTube premiere, 7 p.m. UK time, and then 7 p.m. in two weeks time, we'll be back here again for what will then be episode 20. I believe of this series wow how time flies when you're having fun but that is about it from me for now um, as always if you want to get in touch with us you know how to do it get on the uh, old website and shed.callpress.net you'll also find a contact us form on there as well one or two people have asked me how can I send you pictures um, the simple answer to that is just send me a message to the contact form on there, andyshed.callpress.net, 
and that actually comes to my uh, comes to my email that I will email you back and when I email you back you will then get an email address that you can then send pictures to um, so just send me a message saying oi I want to send you a photograph and then I'll email you back and then you'll be able to send me a picture through we don't put the direct email on the show because basically we get loads of spam so that's uh, that's the old website there andyshed.coldpress.net and also, if you want to uh, support us on Patreon, you can. www.patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed is the place to go there. But from me, for now, I will just double check what everybody is saying in the chat. Uh, da, da, da. No model number on it, says Chris, on that phone. Um, so we don't know exactly what it is. So we can't really look it up. But I'll do a bit of digging and try and find out a bit more about it a bit, a bit more about the uk version of it as well if i possibly can and i've not got one of those actually so i might have to go out and get one now so i can put it on the show right right it's time to hit ebay then <laughs> you watch the price of the little skyrocket now um so from us for now thanks everybody for watching once again remember as well please if you're watching this on youtube and you're not subscribed please subscribe to us we need to hit a thousand subscribers so we can monetize the channel and when we can monetize the channel it makes us a few a few extra pennies that we can put into making bigger and better videos and more videos as well um, we're at about 750 subscribers i think at the minute um so if you're not subscribed already hit the subscribe button if you're worried that you're going to get loads of notifications that you don't want then just don't hit the bell icon because it's the bell icon beside the subscribe button that gives you the notifications but hit subscribe please whether you're on you particularly if you're on youtube but even if you're on library as well hit it hit the follow thing on library and remember we are on library um go to lbry.com or lbry.tv to find out more about that or google on my uh, YouTube site look for uh, a thing about how to use library and uh, also on my library page as well look for Andy Sheridan library and look on there how to use library and there's a video all about it made by yours truly okie doke that really is it thanks for watching this week um, I will see you next time same time, same place next week. Well, not quite same time. Maybe a little bit earlier. 7 o'clock. We were on at 7.15 this week, weren't we? So 7 o'clock next week for the premiere with sort of putting the uh, the phone together there. And I'll be live in the chat as well. And then the following week, normal service will be resumed. But from me for now, have a great week ahead. Stay safe, as everybody's saying at the moment. And uh, wherever you are, see you soon. <laughs>